Hello everyone clinicians, this is Ali Nasser and I come to you from a very snowy Boston Common with this Friday's question. This Friday's question comes to us from a viewer from India, a place that is much warmer than here right now, and asks uh, what is the difference between the epoxy resin sealers and the bioceramic sealers? So that's a great question, uh, let's get to it. Incidentally, today is the anniversary of my trip to India. A couple of years ago, I traveled to this beautiful and uh, wonderful land full of uh, kind and hospitable people and gave two full days of presentations in Bangalore and Mumbai. So I also got a chance to visit New Delhi and the Taj Mahal. During the short trip, I shot a six minute travel documentary uh, that I'm going to share with you at the end of this tutorial. If you're interested in watching it, uh, stay tuned till the end of this tutorial to watch uh, that video. Okay. So let's get back to Dr. Balaji's question. The bioceramic sealer became available in 2007 and that's when I began using it clinically. Prior to that, I was using uh, resin sealers since 1997, and then prior to that, I was using ZOE-based sealers like Kerr Pulp Canal Sealer and uh, Roth Sealer and Grossman Sealer. So I think if I try to explain my rationale for switching at each instance, uh, maybe that it could be helpful in understanding the nature of each cement and the decision making for them. But uh, let's first establish that the sealer's function is to address the shortcoming of gutta percha as a filler. Gutta percha, even when thermoplasticized, has a, um, an adaptability problem to the canal and it shrinks 7% upon cooling. Therefore, we need sealers to fill in these gaps. However, uh, sealers have always exhibited poor material properties, so we've been told that we need to minimize their interface with, uh, with the walls by condensing them to a thin film. This is a concept that I refer to as minimizing the sealer interface, or MSI. So a thin sealer interface has been the leading intellectual axiom in endodontics over the past 50 years because sealers have always been the weak link uh, during our obturation of the root canal. In fact, all of those heavy condensation techniques that we're all familiar with were all developed during the ZOE era, which was, by the way, a terrible sealer compared to some of the modern sealers that are available. So we were putting active condensation force on roots, potentially cracking them, causing little micro cracks and breaks in order to address the shortcoming of available sealer at that time. Ironically, ZOE based sealers are still sold today and are very popular even though they're, they're really terrible materials and have terrible properties for endodontic therapy compared to some of the modern sealers. But then again, let's face the facts, silver points are still being sold today even though they're used when obsolete in the 1970s. So I guess for some people, some habits die hard or some people just don't keep up uh, with the developments in uh, technology. Anyway, uh, at the first instance that I got a chance to move away from ZOE, I switched as the resin sealers became available and they were shown to be superior to zinc oxide eugenol. Resins uh, were developed to address some of the shortcomings of the zinc oxide eugenol based sealers and were inspired by their use in restorative dentistry. They showed slightly better properties uh, compared to ZOE in that they were dimensionally more stable uh, than ZOE and washed a little bit less, but they still were cytotoxic, mostly hydrophobic, and uh, they didn't bond either to the dentin or to the gutta percha and still did wash out uh, in time. So uh, they were by no means perfect and therefore when using them, we were still forced to minimize the sealer interface through doing our lateral and vertical condensation techniques that we were told to use. It was only when the technology in handling bioceramic particles improved to the point where pure nanoparticulate bioceramic compounds were developed in 2007 that a new class of sealers became available. This class was unique um, and had very little in common with the previous generation of resin and ZOE based sealers. For one, this new class of sealers were much more biocompatible, uh, they chemically bonded to dentin, they were antimicrobial because of their high pH, they were hydrophilic which was great, dimensionally stable, didn't shrink and then it didn't wash out of the canal and none of the previous in the, um, uh, sealers in the past had these properties. 
For one, this new class of sealers were much more biocompatible. Uh, they chemically bonded to dentin. They were antimicrobial because of the high pH. They were hydrophilic. They were dimensionally stable. They didn't shrink and they didn't wash out of the canal. So none of the previous sealers had these properties. So all of a sudden the game had changed. You had a sealer that could have been used as a filler and this chemistry was proof of, uh, of that fact. So in 2007, when I learned about the chemistry of this new formulation of pure nanoparticulate by ceramic cements, which is now known as the endosequence BC sealer here in North America, or total fill in the rest of the world, we at Real Dendo couldn't help but see its potential application as the ideal cement for a passive obturation technique that relied on the sealer to do what condensation did historically for obturation. And that was the birth of hydraulic condensation technique, which is also referred to as passive obturation or bonded obturation. This is because there is no condensation with pluggers or spreaders. Your gutta percha cone is your uh, condenser. It's merely the placement of a tapered cone uh, through a bioceramic cement mass and then cementing it. So it's really no different really than cementing a post. And if you think about it, posts are root canal obturation material and we don't seem to have a problem obturating the top part of the canal with a post using a bonded cement. So a post really is a single cone filling material in the root canal. The bioceramic cement extends this concept of passive post cementation all the way to the apex of the tooth using a, uh, a slightly tapered gutta percha cone and a bioceramic cement um, and uh, in what is called passive obturation. So I switched to this technique back then in 2007, 2008, and then uh, we at Rebuild Dendo have been trying to educate others about the benefits of this technique, namely the efficiency of achieving an effective, high quality bonded obturation with less technique uh, sensitivity, which is really a key thing. Since 2007, nearly 10 million cases have been done using hydraulic condensation and I've personally uh, completed over 5,000 cases in my practice with many eight-year recalls. I've found that hydraulic condensation is a better technique. It's much faster, less technique sensitive, and puts a lot less condensation pressure on teeth, therefore reducing root fracture through a hydroxyapatite mediated bonding inside the root with the most biocompatible cement that is currently available on the market. So, to Dr. Blagi, I can say that we moved from an era of ZOE to resin cements. And while resins were better than ZOE, they were really not as biocompatible, antimicrobial, hydrophilic, and self-bonding than the new generation of nanoparticulate bioceramic cements. And that's the difference between the two materials. Basically, there is really no advantage in using a resin. They are the older generation of cements. There are many advantages, however, um, in using bioceramics, and uh, they're the future of endodontic cements, let's face it, as universal cements. So I believe that this new family of compounds have superior properties to those previous cements for the purposes in the root canal obturation. That, uh, and I'm going to provide a link right below this uh, video uh, for all the independent uh, scientific articles that have been published in different centers around the world over the past eight years supporting my uh, statement. Anyway, so I hope this information was helpful to you. If you have any questions or uh, comments, don't hesitate to post them below this video or um, go to our website. For those of you now who are interested in viewing my six minute video from my trip to India, please stay tuned for that to roll. Now, just as a side note, some of the scenes from this video that you're about to see were purchased from me uh, by an international airline for their TV commercials. So uh, I hope that you enjoy it too.